Okay, well, I'll, um, I'll introduce Isla, um, who, who can take it away, and um, please make sure you put anything in the Q&A as you need to. Thank you, Isla. Good evening and welcome to our open night. My name is Isla and I am joined by Josh. We are student leaders from Year 8 and we will be hosts for this evening's event. We are joined by Miss Robin Matthews, the school principal, Mr. Chris Kazanis, the deputy principal, Miss Sonia Davies, head teacher wellbeing, Miss Renee Lane, head teacher creative and performing arts, Miss Jody Kelso, head teacher administration and innovation, Mr. Nigel Kwan, head teacher in science and mathematics, and Miss Karen Witherden, head teacher in English and humanities. Before we get started, I would like to read our inner Sydney High School acknowledgement of country. Kuwi, hello in Gadigal language. Murray Burnham, welcome. At Inner Sydney High School, we would like to acknowledge and pay respects to the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation. We acknowledge the connection with the land, nature, and each other. We acknowledge that our school is built on what it was, is, and always will be Gadigal land. Thank you, Josh. I would now like to hand over to Ms. Robin Matthews, who will give the principal's overview. Thank you, Isla. Well, welcome everybody to our first virtual open night um, presentation. It is great to know that there are so many families out there and it, the other good news will be that you will also be able to visit our school and I'll talk to you about that in this presentation. So what we're going to do first of all is run through an overview about our school. But I think what's also really lovely is you're going to hear from our students because I think it's so important to hear about what it's like to hear about school from their perspective. So first of all, tonight's presentation is going to be about enrolment, our tour details, features of our school, and what matters most. And of course, how are we going to support your child at Inner Sydney High School? So some of you might be familiar with the journey of Inner Sydney. It started back in 2012, where we had to really consider what the needs were for a new high school in the middle of the city. And it's great to see moving forward what we have achieved in I think a relatively short period of time. If we consider what is Inner Sydney all about, and I think this picture or these slides really sum that up. We've worked really hard to establish a really positive identity and inclusive community that really embraces positivity within our school. As you can see, our uniform represents a little bit about our school. It's contemporary, it's inclusive, and what's really lovely, it was part of our community consultation to really think about what is going to be the identity of INSID. Now, a few facts about our school. We opened last year in 2020, co-educational, comprehensive public high school. Currently, we have approximately 350 year seven and year eight students, and the school will grow each year with each cohort of year seven students. It's hard to believe that by the time we, um, we get to the, our students get to year 12, our current year eight students, we'll have capacity for 1,200 students. And as you would be aware, we do have an enrolment catchment in place. As, we, as I have seen already, there are a number of questions about enrolment. So I'm just gonna break it up in relation to if your child attends a government primary school. So you would have received an EOI form which is um, from your primary school. So what you need to do first of all is when you fill out that form and your school will help you, find out whether you are in our catchment area. You can do that by the school locator and I'm sure you'll be able to ask your primary school. Now, if you're not in our in area, you will then have to put, if you wish to, you may put inner Sydney high school down as your out of area choice. Then you need to hand in your EOI form to your primary school by the 19th of March. Now, in some cases, your primary school may have already asked for that information already. Now, if you attend a non-government primary school, then you will need to download, download the form, um, which is on um, our website, as well as on the Department of Education's website. And in that case, you will need to return the form directly to Inner Sydney High School. Now, in terms of tours, it has been a very tricky world, as you can be imagine, in relation to COVID. So what we've done is we've organised tours to start next week if your child is in Year 6. And I think it's really important for our Year 6 students and parents and carers to have a tour of the school. So tomorrow afternoon, you'll be able to actually book on Tribooking um, 
a spot for next week and all that information will be sent to you after this presentation. Now, we are also offering uh, tours for if you have a child who is in, in a younger year of primary school and those tours will take place in term two as well as community members as well. So as you can see, it's really great to see that we'll be able to offer you a self-guided tour and I know we have lots of students who will be able to um, have a chat to you about what we're offering here at Inner Sydney. Now, our school culture. What are we here for? Our strategic directions really focus on three key areas, and that is about student growth and attainment, innovation, inspired learning with high expectations and continuous improvement, and also authentic collaboration and connections. Our educational precinct, we are in a, a wonderful area, so we have the opportunity to really connect with our local community. Now, I'm sure all of you would be familiar with our tower. You can't miss it. You know, it's a great piece of architecture. And of course, we're so privileged to be in this space. Here's a quick sketch you can see online, um, which is just a bit of a sketch about the different areas of the tower. And you might be able to see there, uh, we have an underground basketball court with a movement studio. We have a library. We have an indoor outdoor cafe space. We have amazing uh, TAS facilities, technological applied studies. Um, plus a sports outdoor basketball court. Moving through the tower, we have a commercial kitchen, domestic kitchen, as well as some flexible learning spaces with science labs. Now, I think the science labs, the architects must have loved science because they actually are north facing and they have an incredible view of the city. So hopefully you'll be able to see it for yourself in the coming weeks for our tours. Now, as I mentioned before, our vision for the school, which we hold quite tightly to, it's really about knowing that our students are known, valued and cared for, but also for our teachers and students to work together, really to think about reflective learners and also to make the most of our stakeholders to maximise potential for wellbeing. And it is our absolute, um, our, we're driven by the fact of creating high quality learning opportunities to make the most of our wonderful facilities. Now, the language at INSID, and here are some words that we might touch on in our presentation and you may hear about next week as well. But just to consider a few things, we have something called a lead mentor, which actually oversees our, our mentoring program, which is called Touchdown Sessions, quite explicitly um, each week. We have something called Pursue Your Passion Sessions, and that's actually part of our timetable. And I can talk about that a little bit later. Um, we've decided not to have bells because you really are trying to focus on self-regulated learners. And we're all getting used to it, but our students are doing really well, as are our teachers. So we have learning sessions. We have four learning sessions each day um, where we can have the opportunity to really dive deep into our learning. Something else we've been really proud of last year were our student-led inspired conferences. So our students are leading those um, meetings with the teachers and the parents. And I know our students might have been a bit nervous about that, but they actually did get a lot of out of the process. Okay, moving forward, I know time is quite precious. As I said before, our students are known, valued and cared for and are at the centre of what we do. So all our decision making, we really do come back to our students. And as we develop our new culture, they are the centre of, our, of the choices that we make to ensure the maximum potential for future success. As you can see there, you can see camps, you can see um, looking out to that amazing view and the excitement, I think, for actually moving and scaling up into the tower. And an example of our collaboration, this is just one example from the beginning. Um, our, our teams, what would you know as house groups? We know we have Freeman, Goods, Barty and Thurston. And it all came from our students. And it was a really exciting process to see the way they work together collaboratively to actually come up with our in-sid teams and to see them in action at our swimming carnival was absolutely, it was fantastic to see. Now, building in SID, our guiding principles are quite simple. It was a complex process to land here, but we're committed to these guiding principles. And that's about respect, kindness, and excellence. And I know that some other people here tonight will be able to touch on that in more detail, but it's something in terms of our recognition systems, all that we do really are uh, they're so strong in the, in the fabric of inner Sydney High School. 
based on positive education, which I'm sure either we, I have quite a few head teachers around the table that might like to go into that in a little bit more detail later in the presentation. Except my screen has frozen. <laughs> so I might just need to, I oh, know we're back on board. Um, as I mentioned before about positive education, we do have um, a mentoring session three times a week. And it's deliberately called um, with, with different themes. So we have Mindfulness Monday, Wellbeing Wednesday, and Feedback Friday. So we actually gain feedback from our students and actually build that into our practices for the following week. So then we can be responsive and agile and actually always ensuring we are meeting the needs of our students as well as our teaching staff. And something earlier, pursue your passion. This has been a really inc incredible journey, I believe, in terms of working with our community, where we start in year seven with your story, we then move on to um, sustainability and in year eight about community, and our final um, semester, semester two, is actually pursuing students' own passion. We're very excited about the planning around that. Now, one thing I need to stress to you is that we are following the same curriculum as you would do in any school in New South Wales. The main difference there you will see would be the languages. And I'm very proud to say, I've just had a teacher who's been made permanent um, this week, and she teaches Italian and um, Japanese. So we're really excited to have her on board. But please remember moving forward through the New South Wales School of Languages, you are able to study any language of your choice right through to the HSC. But um, apart from languages, we are covering exactly the same subjects as any other school in New South Wales, apart from non-government schools that may include religion as part of their um, curriculum. So just a little bit of a, a quick sketch. We do start at 8.50 and we finish at 3.10 on Monday, Wednesday and Friday. You might see our students in their sports uniform on Tuesdays because we have PIP and sport on a Tuesday and a slightly earlier finish on a Thursday. Now, our extracurricular activities, Lillian is going to address quite a few of those activities. Um, and one thing to remember moving forward, we have a parent portal, which we can go and talk to you about in more detail um, once you join our community later in the year. Now, that must look so confusing to all of you out there, but what's important to remember is our students get to know their timetable really quickly. And this is because of what something we have at the beginning of our, the way we start year seven is called I Week. So we prepare our students to learn what life is like at INSID. And we also explicitly teach those 21st century competencies around collaboration, critical thinking, creativity and communication skills. And all the feedback has been fantastic for our students in really understanding um, what life would be like at INSID, particularly in relation to the use of technology. So we're very fortunate here. We have a one-to-one -one, uh, laptop use across the school. That's the seven and eight, where the students are allocated a laptop, but it's actually kept at school. There is a technology levy that we, um, that we ask for, but I know that using Microsoft Teams and OneNote was invaluable last year during COVID, and it has it continued to be a very successful way to, as, for the use of our technology platforms. Now, Year six to seven transition. I'm a strong believer that this is one of the most important transition points in a child's life. So we offer a few things which are quite different here in inner Sydney. So we will offer family interviews for every family. Um, that'll be on the 16th and 17th of November, where every family is invited to come along, meet a member of staff and talk through your dreams, aspirations, achievements, and any support that might be required. We also offer a networking day, and that's a day for students that might be a bit nervous about coming to high school, or they might only not know too many friends from their primary school coming to INSID. So it's a chance to connect with their peers, as well as a the open, uh, sorry, not open day, orientation day, which is available for every state um, school student in New South Wales. So, This seems to be happening to me because I think I'm getting to the end of the presentation. But how do you find out what's happening at NC? Well, what you can do is always give us a call, email us, have a look at our website. I'd strongly recommend that you do look at our online presentations in a bit more detail because it will cover all the topics that I've just um, covered in this presentation tonight. 
Um, <clears throat> pardon me, you might be following us on our social media channels already. That's Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And please remember our newsletter is published every fortnight. Um, so please feel free to have a look at the um, newsletter to keep up to date with what's happening at Inner Sydney High School. So enough from me. I think what's really important now is that you need to actually hear from our students. So I'll hand back to you, Josh. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Matthews. Gabriel and Otto, two year seven students, will now give a presentation about the, about the day in the, in the life of a year seven student at INSEAD. I'm Gabriel and this is Otto. We are year seven students at Inner Sydney High School. Tonight, we will be sharing our experiences of life at this brand new high school with you all. In year six, we are provided with opportunities to connect with the school and school community at Inner Sydney High School. We were invited to watch Zoom presentations that gave us information about the school, the uniform, learning and assessment structures, as well as extracurricular opportunities. We were also invited to attend family interviews where the students and their parents met with a staff member to discuss the interests and needs of each student before they started high school. This experience made us feel made us feel less nervous as the teachers were friendly and it was good and it was comforting to know that someone already knew something about you. Along with the family interviews came the decision of which items of uniform we wanted to wear. INSID offers a variety of contemporary uniform pieces that cover a wide range from ties and scarves to vests and blazers. We can wear shorts, trousers, tunics or skirts, shirts and skirts all year round. We also had to work out how to get to inner Sydney High School. Students use trains, buses, and some even ride their scooters and bikes to get to school. The iWeek program held for the first four days of the school year included activities such as finding learning spaces around the school and finding our classmates within our touchdown groups. iWeek gave us the opportunity to learn how to use our laptops, as well as learning about Microsoft Teams and OneNote which is the platforms that we use at INSEAD. We started on our PIP or Pursue Your Passion with the MCA and created our first mini project. At the end of this semester, we will need to create a work that reflects our identity using project-based learning and design thinking processes. Later in the week, we learned about our classes, teachers and subjects. Throughout the day, we don't have any bells, so we have to keep track of time in breaks and the start of the day, which helps us to become more independent. This year, we are studying maths, science, English, history, geography, music, visual arts, PDHPE, techn technology mandatory, languages, which is Japanese, and PIP. During class time, teachers are supportive in a way which helps you want to learn more about a specific subject. We have sport every Tuesday where we can choose to play grade sport, which is like PWSA, recreational sports such as bowling or rock climbing, or we can do house sport at school. We have started to form knockout teams and look forward to gala days later in the year. We just had our swimming carnival and we'll soon have our cross country car. Lillian from year eight will talk about our extracurricular program shortly. The next thing that conquered was the school grounds. The school itself comprises of four buildings named Cleveland, Chalmers, Belvoir and the Tower, which will be named shortly. We have had to learn to use the lift efficiently and find where the learning spaces are throughout the different buildings. We have four 75 minute sessions in an average day, which means four different learning spaces to explore. The cafe has a great variety of choice from juices and milkshakes to burgers and sandwiches. When eating and catching up, there are many spaces like level one and level four, as well as the amphitheater that you can hang out, hang out with your friends at. If you wanna catch up on work or have a quiet reading space, the student hub and library is also open during break times and before school most days. Two weeks ago, year seven went to count in Morrisset Outdoor Education. We had opportunities like learning how to build a raft, how to safely put on harnesses, and some people like me conquered their fears. Camp was an amazing opportunity because we connected with other students and teachers. At camp, students were able to challenge themselves and got to experience different activities with new friends. People ask me what it's like to go to a school that only has year seven and eight students. 
We have a lot of opportunities open to us outside of the classroom in leadership, sport and extracurricular. Usually you have to wait until the senior years to get an opportunity to be a, lead, a school leader. But at, but at INSID, the Student Inspired Leadership Group is open to anyone with an interest in leadership. Last year, the leadership group raised, raised awareness and money for charities such as the Wayside Chapel and Movember. So what is it like? What, so what do we enjoy about Inner Sydney the most? The thing I enjoy the most at Inner Sydney are the state-of-the-art facilities that help, you, that help push you to strive as a student at INSID, including a full-size gym, basketball, basketball court, and amazing learning spaces such as commercial and domestic kitchens and multiple science labs. I really enjoy participating in the extracurricular activities and I am enjoying being a part of the dance ensemble this year. We look forward to seeing you next year at Inner Sydney High School. Thank you, Gabriel and Otto, for that great presentation. Lillian will now talk about the wonderful extracurricular opportunities we have available at Inner Hi, I'm my name is Lillian, and I am a Year 8 student here at Inner Sydney High School. There are many different extracurricular opportunities at our school for every interest, from creative writing to role-playing and minifigures, as well as Minecraft and chess club. For those of you more mathematically minded, there is also a Maths Explorer Club, as well as Learning Hub for extra support with checkpoints and classwork. This year, there is also a new language club for students interested in exploring different cultures and languages. Our public speaking and debating club is also very popular. Last year, our debaters managed to go through to the finals of the Premier's debating challenge. At Inner Sydney High School, we also offer some more sporting activities beyond sport and PDHPE. Our swimming club on Monday afternoon is for those looking to improve their stroke in a non-competitive environment. More sports, such as volleyball, will be added soon. Our creative and performing arts program includes dance ensembles, drama ensembles, and art club. Our instrumental musical program currently includes a concert band and vocal ensemble. We are looking to include a stage band and rock band in the near future. We are excited about the opportunity to perform at regional and school-based festivals this year, now that COVID restrictions are beginning to lift. As a performer, I have been involved in a range of ensembles, including dance company, drama company, and vocal ensemble. I've enjoyed performing dances in both contemporary, jazz, and lyrical styles, choreographed by our external choreographer, Miss Reagan. In the drama company with our drama teacher, Miss Lane, I've learned about improvised and scripted drama, and have performed at the Year 7 Performance Night, as well as one of our recognition assemblies. Although our vocal ensemble with our music teacher, Mr. Lloyd, was cut short last year because of COVID restrictions, I've still been able to perform the school song at formal assemblies. This year, we are looking forward to many more performances at school and in the community. I have really enjoyed being part of the different ensembles at our school. They have helped me improve my dance, drama, and singing skills. I can't wait to see my progress in the coming year, and I am excited to perform for my friends, family, and our community. There's something for everyone here at Inner Sydney, and the best thing that you can do is find what works for you and join up. Thank you. Thank you, Lillian, for such a wonderful presentation. There sure are a lot of our extracurricular opportunities for students at Inner Sydney. We will now begin our Q&A part of the presentation. If you would like to ask a question, please put your questions in the Q&A section of the webinar. They will be displayed to the panel who will answer as many questions as they can live. All right, obviously there's been plenty of questions placed already. I think we'll get right into it. Uh, if we will endeavour to answer as many questions as possible, some of those questions, if we do not get to them, you're more than welcome to send an email to Inner Sydney High School and you will get a response back. Uh, Alana is one of our first cabs off the ranks. So how many out of area placements do you think you'll have next year, Robin? Uh, look, to answer your question, we're not sure ourselves. Um, Judging from the last few years, um, we're not sure about the demographics, about how many um, students will be in area. So we have to ascertain our in area placements first. Um, we will probably offer, I know it's very difficult for families, I would suggest that you do um, make arrangements 
arrangements with your in-area school, but those places might be offered very late this year, purely because of the numbers that we have so far to date. The um, interest has been very strong. Yeah, thank you for that. There was an anonymous question too, just about streaming of English and maths. I will turn over to our head teachers of English and Mathematics, Karen and Nigel, just to talk about in stage four what we do in our process. Mm -hmm. um, at the moment, no, we have um, fully comprehensive classrooms that are mixed stability. And so we're um, providing opportunities for students within those um, classrooms to be extended or to receive modified work based on um, their abilities and their interests but they are not separate classrooms. And that's in, in mathematics um, in year seven and in year eight, they are mixed ability classes, but we'll be responsive to student need. As I hope you can see, there is a lot of student voice um, within our school and we will, we, will, we will be responsive to that moving forward. All right, Rosemary Donald, you just asked a question about bringing two stage three students on a tour. If there's one adult and one child, I'll just hand over to Ms. Kelso, who's organised all of those tours for the uh, community. The bookings have been set up for one adult and one child. However, if that does not fit your circumstances, can you please contact the school and we'll talk to you personally? Okay, fantastic. And just a very quick one, probably over to uh, Miss Davies, just about camp. I think the, is there vegetarian food available? I think that must've been in response to, uh, oh, no, oh, sorry, and in the cafe. Uh, okay, the cafe. But well, let's oh. answer for both. Yeah, actually... absolutely. On camp, we can meet all um, dietary requirements. So we have students that were allergic to many things. We have students that um, are gluten-free and also vegetarian. So absolutely, we can cater to that. And that is the same for the, ca the cafe also. So Kiri, um, obviously we need to know those actual requirements, but that can be covered at a later stage. Will, thank you for your question about the basketball court in the basement. Is it a full-size court or a half court? Well, not only is it a full-size court, we actually have incredible performance spaces in behind it, a uh, full set of change rooms, and it is an absolutely exceptional space that students get to access. We look forward to you seeing it on your tour. Um, we have uh, one just about disciplinary approach. Uh, does the school follow? I know that there's a few questions now, so they're sort of bouncing around a little bit from Tamara. I will hand over because I know that um, positive education is the cornerstone of what we do in terms of our wellbeing. And obviously that um, leads into, some, uh, into disciplinary approach. And I'll just ask Karen if she can answer that question, please. Okay, so that our, um, we have a wellbeing framework that embraces positive education and seeks to enable students as regulators of their own behaviour. Um, they're supported in terms of that to understand the role of consequence and the role of building on one's um, abilities and their strengths in order to um, have a discipline system that works not only in the short term within the school, but also enables them to be in charge of their own um, learning, in charge of their own growing, in charge of becoming the best citizens they can, both within their communities, but also um, in their classrooms, and then as they, they move on to the work world. Um, the basis of that is also partly around um, restorative practices, and um, that sits with the um, latest release document um, on behaviour policy and enabling students from a wellbeing perspective, but ones that seeks to grow their own capacity and reflect upon their behavioural choices. All right, thanks, Karen. And look, from Lily, just do you allow devices at school or not? Robert, I think we can probably talk to the okay. technology strategy. Well, also, really with um, devices, I was actually going to answer the question about mobile phones. We have a zero tolerance to mobile phones, so our request is for students when they walk into the school gate, across the gate, that um, phones are banned. So they're invisible. We don't want to see them because our students have a device to use already. They have a one-to-one -one device. And so we believe it's really lovely, great times to see our students interacting together. So that's part of the reason why we have a zero tolerance to mobile phone use. And every child will be supplied with a device in Year 7 for next year and they will be kept on site, but they can also be accessed outside of hours through our beautiful student hub. Um, look, from a question just here about if you are in catchment area, our daughter is going to be accepted into inner Sydney High School. One word answer, Ms. Matthews? Yes. Absolutely. Uh, Belinda, the Performing Arts uh, Program. I will hand over to Ms. Lane, who is our head teacher of CAPA, but I know that we will also be directing you to some of our community Zoom presentations that actually cover it in more detail. But just over to you about Performing Arts, maybe a little bit more of a, a look at it. 
Yep, sure. So we have had a huge in, intake into our performing arts program. So we have this year two, um, two drama groups, um, two dance groups. We have a, we've grown our concert band, which is awesome. Um, and we are looking to include a stage band as well as um, a rock band and probably looking at strings also in the next year or two as well, as those numbers build into the school. Um, our art club is quite popular too, so we're running it this year in semesterized basis. So year seven are running semester one and then year eight, semester two. So we've made a really good um, start with the arts at school and we <clears throat> definitely have a lot of really great things planned for this year. So yeah, very much um, on the up. And just from an attendee, I'm oh, sorry, I don't have their name here, but how do you support gender diversity within the school? And I think I'll hand that over to our head teacher wellbeing. Uh, yep. Ladies. yep, so um, within the school, the toilets, this is a really, I think, fantastic approach that we have at INSEAD. All of the toilets, so there's no such thing as a toilet block, as in quite a lot of high schools. So we have individual uh, toilet facilities. So every student could go into a, into a toilet facility that is um, male or female or um, for both genders. So on the camp, that was taken into consideration as well. We're really um, sensitive to that. All of the um, staff have done gender equity training. So it's something that's really um, passionate and intensive and um, we really take notice from the students. All right, and thank you, Mike. Just uh, obviously the compliment. We really do appreciate the impressive presentation. But uh, bullying happens everywhere, is your comment, and what's the process for managing this? Look, I think, Mike, it's pretty simple to say we have an anti-bullying policy, we have zero tolerance on it, but it is also about establishing conditions that I know Nigel will probably talk to a little bit later in terms of being able to support both uh, the victim as well as other students in understanding what that impact has. So it's really about making sure that there is a common understanding of what is the culture here at the school in terms of putting you know, something out there that might affect someone else's wellbeing. Um, but we can obviously share that in greater detail and you will see our anti-bullying policy on the website. We have um, someone who says, sorry, Fernanda, who says, not moving into school catchment until later in the year. Is there a cutoff date for enrolment for next year? Well, there, there isn't a cutoff date because if you are in area, you have a place set in a Sydney high school. However, we will not be able to process your application until we have that documentation, the 100 point check, which is available on the website in our enrolment guideline policy. All right, and thank you, Paolo. We've got a question just about transport to and from school. I think I can probably oh, yes, handle that. that. We did actually have a green travel plan. We are incredibly fortunate and privileged in the space that we are because we are at the epicentre of all the transport needs within Sydney. So you've obviously got Central Station 700 metres down the road. We also have incredible new trams that take us out further into the east of our catchment area. We do have bus lines that both run east and west and north and south. So we are very well established in terms of transport. Uh, Multimodal is a very big thing here at this school. We have a bike storage um, as well as obviously other pieces of equipment for over 200 bikes down in our lower ground in building two. So I strongly encourage staff and students very much make their way through multiple ways of travel. The only thing that I would suggest is for your child is take the time through the holidays just to investigate a few. There is also some of this published on our website in terms of our green travel plan. So you will be able to access that. If you can't find it, just send an email to the school and we can share that with you. And all of the um, students have training from transit support as well. Yeah. Absolutely, yes, absolutely. So we do have Transport for New South Wales come out and talk to our students as part of our iWeek program um, to familiarise themselves with how to get to and from school safely and uh, respectfully. If I could just perhaps answer the next one about the temporary residence program, I would suggest if that applies to you, contact contact us directly. I think it's a lot easier that way um, in, term, in terms of how the visa program and how that works. Okay, I'm going to go to Ahmed's question just about enrichment and talented classes. So I think we're talking about gifted and talented here. And I will hand over to Miss Lane, who did an exceptional presentation on that today for professional learning for our staff. Sure. So um, I guess part of our extracurricular program um, that Lillian spoke about today does um, definitely enrich the students in terms of their interests. Um, last year and this year, of course, we'll be actually um, entered the Tournament of Minds competition and this year we'll expand from one team to multiple teams in the different disciplines. Um, we also entered the Game Changer Challenge, which is run by the Department of Education, which really focuses on design thinking. So that's, again, something that we'll look at at multiple teams entering this year. So we are definitely putting ourselves out there and giving as many opportunities as we can to students that need that enrichment. Um, 
Okay, thank you very much, Renee. Um, I am going to turn to one just probably for Ms. Davies, just about um, a little on how you support neurodiverse students. Okay, so um, I won't go too much into detail of what we do to support students, but we, um, we do have a really good learning support system at Inner Sydney. So if you do have students that you um, think have extra needs or you would like to talk to me, please contact the school and I can talk to you uh, individually. Okay, thank you, Ms. Davies. And Anya asked just about uh, choosing a language, and if you'd like to learn through to year 12, does that mean it's only between Japanese and Italian, or are there other languages also? No, so um, currently we can offer uh, Japanese and Italian on site here at Inner Sydney High School. Uh, if you want to choose a language other than those two languages, then you can do that through the New South Wales School of Languages, and we have an incredible space in the library where our students will be able to learn. Um, it's almost like a distance education model. So in answer, to answer your question, you can choose any language that you like. All right, and a lovely question from Serena. Again, thank you for the compliment as well about uh, congratulations on the amazing facilities. But to be honest, we are in that privileged position here. But you were just asking about our affiliations to do with visual arts, as well as obviously it sounds like the educational precinct. So I think you might be touching on things such as the artist educators that we work with with MCA. And I will hand over to Karen <laughs> Witherden to uh, answer that for you. So we're in the very fortunate position in having um, a partnership with the Museum of Contemporary Art where we work with their artist educators and um, look at developing the students' creative thinking skills and critical thinking skills. Within that program, the artist educators come into the school and we also visit the MCA. Um, students have the opportunity to view such works as Lindy Lee's recent exhibition. They, um, in the end of the semester, actually produce their own creative work and um, COVID remaining where it is, we'll actually have a full exhibition um, of the student work and that takes many different um, manifestations. Some students have done sculpture, some students have worked in textile, some students have worked um, in painting or multimedia, some students have worked in podcasts. So it really is an expression of the children's own response in terms of their own identity. And they've also learned a um, a team of children chose to actually learn about curation of works with the gallery as well, which was quite a, um, a privileged position to be in and has been um, really stunning to see how much they learned about that in terms of the interpretation of what they're producing. All right, thank you, Karen. Just very quickly, a question from Daniel about a gymnastics program. Daniel, at currently there is not, but that doesn't mean that we're not responsive to student voice and you'll find that all the extracurricular activities that Lillian spoke to are actually as a result of student voice and choice. So moving forward, if there is a demand for it, absolutely, we will look into it. We do have an incredibly sprung on floorboard downstairs in that gymnasium, which is, is begging to be used. Uh, Marcus, we all have uh, the school building facilities. Are, are they now open, the question is, or are they progressing? being open so you might be familiar within 2020 we were only operating in the heritage building hence why we only had year seven and we were limited in our numbers for year seven who are currently year eight now we actually have full occupancy of the entire building james had a question just about how do you manage to move so many students up and down the towers I can say with great strategy and precision, um, we have had to talk about guidelines for students. We have had to really be active because this is a very different space. It does take getting used to for the students and for the staff. But so far, I believe that we are doing it incredibly well, uh, but we are always on that process of refinement and improvement. I've also got uh, another question just about the extracurricular activities and when they help. Uh, they're held from Monday through to Friday, morning or afternoon, it really just depends on the availability of staff um, as well as the external providers. For a more detailed um, look at it, you can actually refer back to our presentation, which was current as of the end of last year, which is still quite relevant for this year. And you'll also be keep an eye out in our newsletters where we update that uh, fortnightly. Does the school have a counsellor, psychologist, as many DOE high schools do these days? Simple answer, Ms Matthews. Yes, three days a week. Okay. And he's um, very good. I'm very happy with um, our council. So we have a question just about a football field. Um, thank you very much for that question there too. Look, we don't, but I think it's about the 
uh, introducing the idea of this whole educational precinct that we have. So we actually take our learning beyond the four walls. We do have incredible access to facilities from Redfern all the way through into the city. Um, MCA is an example of that, but also a lot of sporting grounds and facilities that we are able to access. Our students also do go out to the University of Sydney too for one of their sports in multi-sport. So we do have opportunities for that. As for an actual football, if we're talking soccer, we do also have a futsal facility downstairs in that gymnasium. Um, so we've mentioned a few, there's zero. I'm just going through sort of curating a few of these questions because some of these have been um, obviously answered already. So hopefully if you don't hear your actual name and your specific question, it's more because we've covered it more broadly, but we do have many questions to get through. Uh, is there a specific school bus route or do students get general bu uh, public transport? Ms Matthews, if you would like. At the moment, there is no specific um, bus school special. That's because of the school with only the number of students that we have. But we hope in the future, we've just been talking to our students earlier, and we're hoping that with our particular parts of where our students come from, hopefully in the future, there will be a school special. And that there is will the plan, be, isn't it? There will be a demand for it, absolutely. Um, we do have just a question. Oh, about staffing? Yes. Look, I might just answer that one if you don't mind. So. Um, so far, I've been obviously very fortunate. We have recruited some fantastic staff, as you can see from the teachers here tonight. Um, we also follow our Department of Education policy in relation to staffing. So we might have central appointments, but then we also have the opportunity to um, make our own selection. So we do a combination of both. So, Mr Quine, I'll be throwing this one to you because I think we'll actually be able to talk about our educational model too as a part of it. But policy on homework and how much homework to expect each day. Yeah, so Ms Matthews um, mentioned that a little bit in the uh, presentation about the different language that we use. So we don't actually use the term homework at in Sydney. It's more about prep and preparing um, the students for the learning that does happen in class. Um, Mr Gzanis alludes to the educational model and I'm perhaps a little bit biased as a scientist for a good analogy, but I do think it help, it's a helpful analogy to um, get a sense of our approach in terms of the education model. And that's this, this learning rainforest. So this idea of setting the conditions for growth, making sure we're looking after the students' well-being so that they are able to grow into those um, really strong knowledge structure trees in this analogy. Um, and that educational model that um, Susanna was mentioning about, it involves the, the ground, the fertile soil, soil in terms of the um, conditions for growth, the strong trunks of knowledge, and that's our curriculum structure really supports that in terms of the specific um, subjects and the subject specific skills that we teach the students. But if you think about any good rainforest that you've been in, it's that amazing canopy that's really inspiring. And at in Sydney, we're really, really um, lucky to be in this amazing educational precinct and have um, subjects like people with the MCA where we can really actually explore those um, possibilities and make those connections. So I like to think of that canopy, all those interleaving um, links there as being a really key part of our educational model, but of course, built upon strong knowledge structures, our trunk, and really fertile soil, which is all that well-being support and those conditions for growth. And PrEP does fit in there, being preparing kids for, um, for growth um, when, when they do come to school ready for learning. And thanks, Nigel. I'm going to uh, paraphrase just a little bit because there's been a fair few questions just about additional needs. And I think obviously family interviews will be a great uh, place where we can delve into it a little bit deeper. So I'm just going to hand over to Ms. Tulsa just to talk about the process of family and interviews and how we get to know your child better and catering for their individual needs. Okay, so we have a number of staff that are present at the family interviews. As Ms Matthews said, they will take place in November of this year. We set up a try booking that you can book into for those. It's a 15 minute um, interview where we can go through a series of questions to learn about your child's strengths and also where we can actually support them. And we have our head teacher wellbeing involved in that as well. So if there are learning plans that you need to discuss, we can also make an appointment at a later time to go through those. And while you're front and centre, Ms Kelso, we might just also ask about the tour bookings for non-year six students. So I imagine this is referring to younger students that might be looking at this in future years and starting to put the decision quite early. Okay, because the year, current year six students have to have their forms in um, very quickly, 
The tours that are held um, for Tuesday and Wednesday of next week are reserved for those uh, families in particular. We have a, another set of bookings that we've set up for next term and they'll be on fortnightly. So you are welcome to make a booking. And the title for that is Tours for Families with Younger School Age Children. And that is for one child and one parent to come along and have a look at our facilities. And there will be more opportunities throughout the year as well. Okay, so just a question from someone about Prince Alfred Park and just use for it at recess and lunchtime. Uh, last year, we did have that as an option for our students, given the limited uh, playground space. I'm also going to cover another question at the same time. We actually have several outdoor learning spaces and recreation spaces for students on level eight, level four, level one, ground level, as well as the lower ground level. But in saying that too, we are constantly reviewing our processes and obviously being a school that is still being established and growing, we will definitely at some stage be using those facilities again for students during that break time. Uh, do we expect to have a rock band in action by 2022? I like the word action. I think that's, that speaks volumes about the person. Oh, Miss Lane? Yeah, I think um, our music teacher and um, IMP coordinator is very keen to get that going, so I would suggest highly probably. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen a few people sitting on both strums downstairs already. Um, also, just a, a good question from Sonia, not the Sonia that's over here, but in fact, the one that's at home. Students needing computer at home as well. We actually have, because of these one-to-one -one devices, as well as our incredible student hub, your child will be able to access that device before and after school. Um, we also have a learning hub where it's supported by staff so they can be helped with things such as prep that Mr. Kwan spoke about. So realistically, no, they wouldn't need a device at home. However, some students still would choose to access a device at home. And you'll probably find, given our context in our area, many students have access to a device at home. However, one dedicated to them is probably not necessary because they'll be using one here for every one of their learning sessions. Because I was trying to just add to that, because I know we do get a lot of questions around um, parents wanting to support their students and asking for a specific laptop brand um, if they are choosing that for their um, for the students. Um, the advice is that the great thing about our systems going through Microsoft Teams and OneNote is that it is device or operating system agnostic. So there's no need to get any special um, types of computers, types of laptops. Our um, systems are very, very um, adaptable. So I just thought I'd preface that because I know that comes up a lot. Fantastic. A uh, question from Beck, just how many year seven classes will be there, there be next year? Ms. Matthews? I'd probably say it depends on the young number of students we have in our cohort, but approximately I would say eight. Which is what we have this year. Exactly. So it just once again, it depends on the numbers in terms of enrolments. Um, from Canberra, I don't know if that's a name or a place, but how many kids are currently attending this swim club? Miss Davies, we run swim club. We have 15 currently, but that's only because of COVID restrictions. So when the COVID restrictions ease at the pool, we can open that up to as many students that would like to join. All right, uh, great question from Nick, just about supporting students with career counselling. And obviously, you know, given our context, Nick, we are actually only years seven, eight and nine. Um, there is distributed throughout, obviously, this leadership team, a lot of experiences in that realm. And as we start to sort of get our students starting to think about their transition into the workplace, um, as well as those skills, we do have people um, in a position to do so. In fact, we actually have a careers advisor here uh, who is a head teacher too. So we do cover all those bases, but obviously it is what are the needs of our current context. Is there garden and green space? I'm going to open that up to anyone that would like to answer that. Or do we answer it all together? Absolutely, there is. There's incredible green space. Um, if we are referring to more like obviously grass areas, it goes back to our educational precinct. We are a school within a park and a park within a school, as Miss Matthews always says. I coined that line just then. Uh, but we do have incredible green spaces here as well as um, beautiful gardens that um, sort of set a really lovely learning um, area for students. Can I add, we also have some um, big garden beds behind our lift shaft and my current Year 7 class are working on planting those out with some herbs that we can be then using in food technology as well. And we will be having a bee colony very soon as well. I don't know if that counts the green space. And Miss Lane, I'll just throw to you just about instruments uh, that they can learn as part of the music programs, if you just want to basically rattle some of them off. Um, I guess anything that you have in a concert band. Um, so we so things like um, flutes, clarinets, um, 
saxophones, trombones, trumpets, bass guitar. We do have, we did purchase um, a whole percussion um, set. So we have um, timpani, we have full drum kit, we have, I think we'll have a gong soon. <laughs> and, so we, we're well equipped for, for our band program. Um, moving into, I guess, stage band, then you can introduce your kind of more electric guitar um, and then looking into strings um, probably next year, I'd suggest. So um, we do have a lot of people that play piano. Piano is not a traditional um, stage uh, concert band instrument, but Mr Lloyd has actually um, has been able to incorporate a couple of keyboard parts into the, the music and also those students tend to jump on percussion as well. So we really do try and accommodate students. We had a girl last year who's a cellist playing percussion and from time to time played cello as well in concert band. So we, we're quite um, adaptable. Just a question, Miss Matthews, maybe just about the lockers and availability of those to students. Uh, the lockers are available for students who may uh, require them for specific needs. It might be about the equipment they need to bring to school. It could be specific um, physical needs. But generally speaking, um, there are no lockers. Lockers are not available for every single student unless there is actually a need for that. And then we can apply and students can apply for that on an individual basis. We're more than happy to actually um, load out those lockers for those students who might require one. And I think it goes back to our educational model and the design brief of the school, as well as the one-to-one -one devices. So obviously just keep in mind that those devices actually house a lot of the work that the students do in classes. Uh, just a typical, from Julia, just a typical class size. Um, Ms Kelso is head teacher on here, if you would like to answer that one. Um, some of our classes are sitting around 26 to 28. Our maximum class sizes in any school in New South Wales is uh, 30 students. And in our visual arts and tech mandatory classes, we can have a maximum of 20 students based on the safety um, numbers and because they're in practical areas and students moving around the room. A uh, question from Rosemary that I'll answer is just about our obviously interest in how strong your school will be in maths, STEM and food technology in year 11 and year 12. It's very hard to get a feel as you only have years 7 and 8. So the indication, the ideas or the school plan, we are actually currently working on a strategic improvement plan and this is something and a complexity that we do need to address as a school and we are currently planning for that. That um, strategic improvement plan will be available as when it is posted at the end of this term. So I think you can probably refer back to that for a bit more detail and, or obviously um, during family interviews or meet us in person. Um, how much of Prince Alfred Park do students have access to at recess and lunch? Look, Alison, in a very simple answer, we have access to all of it. It is about supervision. Um, there is a shared area that the school has with the council, uh, but it is important to understand that as our needs grow, we adapt accordingly. Um, Michael says just a total number of Year 7 students this year, just an idea of what can be expected for next year. Ms. Matthews? Can I say, it is actually growing day by day, but I, I will put it this way to say that because we have capacity up to 1,200 students, um, therefore we are looking at, we have to cater for our in-area students, put it that way. So we also have to have a buffer for families that actually move into areas. So that number is it does vary, but we would be looking at probably a 10% buffer. So you'd be looking at ideally around 190 students for currently and moving forward. Hope that answers that question. So we're trying to get through all of the questions. Obviously, this is a session that we have allowed for um, from six o'clock through. We are endeavouring to get through them. There are a couple of double ups, but what we will do is just trying to push on. Netball for sport, yes, there is. Um, not only as a great sport, which is a weekly competition, but also our wonderful students competed in a regional knockout competition uh, on Tuesday, it feels so long ago now. Um, so yes, there is netball. Emergency procedures in place, Paolo, that's a really good question because we are a vertical school, very similar to the sort of um, buildings that you would see in the city. We do have a cascading um, evacuation plan. We do practice it twice a year and we do have an emergency management plan as well as an action management plan for all of that. The uh, reason I know all of those acronyms is because I plan those and we take students through it. We take safety very seriously. Um, and we, I just need to stress that we are incredibly compliant, obviously, with a new building to all the latest codes that need to be in place there. Um, uh, just a question, just going through, uh, we've spoken about access. Um, 
I might also add, Chris, if you have a question and you are coming to our tours for next week, you, we might be able to answer your questions then as well, because you might also find you have a few more questions after our presentation. Don't forget, this will be recorded. And you might also want to go and have a look at our online presentations available on our website. So that might also um, answer your questions. So I know that it is getting late and um, I can imagine that we probably need to wrap soon. Yes, we do. We do. I'm just going through just anything that sort of hasn't already really been covered. I will also say just for a lot of the questions that are in the um, Q&A, our student handbook that will be issued to our students coming in 2022 has a lot of the questions that cover those nuts and bolts, I guess you would say, such as break times, um, start times, end times, all of that. Um, but there is a lot of the frequently asked questions as well as some of our policies in there. So I will be referring back to uh, for a lot of families for that, as well as when they are on site so we can answer them on an individual basis. Our school tours are available for next week, um, open to out of catchment families. Can you please answer that question, Ms. Kelso? Yes, if you have a child that is in year six, moving into year seven next year, you are welcome to book a tour and have a look. Enrollment, however, will depend on residential address as Ms. Matthews has already outlined. Um, okay, so can we talk a little bit about report cards and frequency and format? I think that's a really good question. Mr. Quine, I will hand over to you because we do do it a little bit differently. Yeah, we do do it. We're very bit proud of that. Different. Um, the if you ask the students who are very patiently sitting there, um, they probably <laughs> talk about um, checkpoints. So we do checkpoints because it's really important, and I'm sure parents would agree to not hold off that um, feedback about how your child is going until half, half year or end of year. So what we do is we do checkpoints. And we actually integrate with um, Central and we'll go through all of that. You can have a look at some of our previous presentations where um, parents are actually able to get updates for when we when students do those checkpoints and see the grades that they are able to achieve. And we're also really proud of the checkpoint system because it allows students to actually take the feedback they get from their um, teachers on their checkpoint assessment, apply um, some learning, maybe choose to do some activities to support them and actually retake that checkpoint and, and improve their grades. So that's something we're really proud of. Um, probably now is not the best time to talk about it because I will talk about it for a long time. So I'll, I'll just I'll stop it. I'll stop it there. Yeah, and probably uh, just referring back to obviously those online presentations is really important. Um, extension classes, English and mathematics. Uh, we do through our, some of our programs such as our Learning Hub on Wednesdays as well as Maths Explorers. So we offer weekly uh, support where English and mathematics teachers are there. And that is a great opportunity for extension. But obviously there is also differentiation and extension within the classroom. And electives start next year for year nine. So, and year nine will begin next year. And then of course, um, our students will move into year 10 for the year after, just to answer a few questions in one. And I wish yeah. you could see how excited their faces were for <laughs> year nine electives the next year. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, so, and I think it's just really important just to reiterate that we are growing organically year by year. So just some of the questions asked about year nine and 10 students, just that that sort of has been covered. It's, it's the same cohort going through that is gradually growing up to year 12. Um, how do you book the tour? Great question, Belinda. Uh, I will hand back over to Ms. Kelso just to go through those finer details, because I think that is a really important and exciting aspect moving forward for families. So when you signed up for this virtual presentation, we were able to get your email addresses. So uh, Nigel Kwan will... Yeah, you'll get another, we've got an automated Zoom message that will have the information with the links. It'll have the three register. links. So if you can choose the link that is um, most suitable to your circumstances, depending on whether you're a community member with school-aged children or um, children in year six, and it's a try booking link. So you can just select the session that works best for you and book your two tickets. And the Zoom um, auto send does say in the next day, that's the earliest I can do it. So don't, don't worry if you don't receive it after this, um, immediately after the presentation, it says a day later. So you'll get that email um, a day later. All right, so there's just been a question about PNC and it's actually quite fortuitous because we did actually have our PNC AGM last night. A uh, really great opportunity to get involved if you are interested in getting involved in the PNC. If you can just send an email to the school, we will then forward on those details to the PNC and also send you back the PNC details so you can make contact with them. Uh, very active, a little bit different to what you would have maybe seen in primary school where the focus is around fundraising. Here it's really about informing best practice here at the school and working side by side with the school. Uh, we did have uh, working groups on assessment and reporting on wellbeing as well as other elements 
positive school life for students, we really value that partnership and connection with families. So it is a great opportunity to get involved. And I think currently we have literally over half of all our families involved in it as we speak. And this is pretty impressive considering some of just five weeks into being part of the INSID family. Um, we had a quick question just about tennis. Yes, tennis from Joy. It is offered um, as part of uh, recreation sport for all students and it takes place in Prince Alfred Park. Um, as part of your curriculum, do you cater for interest-based learning activities? I think just sort of circling back around for Miss Withen and just about pursue your passion. We certainly do in terms of the pursue your passion as um, outlined by um, Ms Matthew's uh, presentation that students once the learning has taken place can actually choose what activity um, they become involved in. There's also opportunities within PBL frameworks of curriculum delivery for students to opt to express their knowledge in a variety of different ways and to um, action that knowledge in a way that best suits their own interests. Okay, there's been a couple of questions just about sort of emerging culture of the school, uh, in particular, making sure that we have that positive culture. Um, there are some questions about some community concerns that I think uh, a lot of families are concerned about. There is a question about vaping. I think it's pretty important to actually answer and say truthfully, we do have obviously our processes that are in place to be able to support not only um, the choices that are made by our students, but obviously the consequences that follow from those choices. But then it is really about investing in the student to allow them for that opportunity for growth because they are learning opportunities. And that's really important. I think that goes back to our positive education framework. But it doesn't mean that we shy away from any of those community concerns that we have in all schools. We are very proactive. We are very involved with our community. We make very deep connections with our local areas, such as people at Central Station, all the way down to places such as up Bondi Westfield Junction. Um, we value those partnerships very deeply and we are very invested in this community. So I think the questions that did come up about that, uh, I think they were anonymous if I can find them, uh, just to sort of go through and say that yes, those issues, when they do arise at any school, they are dealt with, but they are also those learning opportunities behind them. Can I just pick up on the enrolments again? I know I'm just looking at the questions. I know there are lots of questions about enrolment, if I could just add there, Chris. So I think the most important thing is to ask your primary school to ensure that you have the right information about what your in-area school is. Um, I have to say, we will follow the department guidelines. We will form our out-of-area panel and every application will be considered. From there, we actually put together a waiting list, but I'll be honest with you, and I've got some questions around that in terms of when will we find out. Unfortunately, given the, the interest in the school, it, there's a fair chance it will be quite late in the year. So if you are in area, I need to stress again, you have a right to go to your in-area school. And there is no sort of last date when you will be accepted. So it's just really important for you to understand that. And if you have any questions, please ask your primary school. They should be across that information, as well as that our website does have our enrolment guidelines, as well as we just follow our Department of Education policy. All right, just very quickly, Gen Cricket is on offer to the school. Um, we do actually have a team currently competing in Grey Sport, which is our weekly sport competition. I will hand over just for the library and sort of books that are in the library, just over to Miss Witherden, who has also assisted uh, in that area. So the library has a broad um, variety of books, both um, fiction and non-fiction. Obviously, it's a working process. Uh, when we were curating the initial collection, we worked with actually professional library organisations about that and what was best practice in um, starting a collection. As well as that, though, we also have an online platform, which is a Wheeler subscription, um, so that the children can um, borrow books from there. They can also borrow audio books. There's also wellbeing books on that um, platform. And it also provides for... Um, differences for children with um, learning difficulties or anything like that so that they can access um, the books in a variety of platforms. So some of the children at the moment um, are being provided on that platform with both an audio book and also a reading book that we can adjust the font and things on to assist them with their reading. Fantastic. Thank you, Karen. Well, on that note, I think we're going to leave it there. I would like to thank you all for your um, participation tonight. Thank you so much for your questions. I hopefully we've covered all of them. If you have any more questions that you'd like to ask, please come and see us next week. And I look forward to seeing you, hopefully, Jody, through our um, try booking Tuesday process. or Wednesday of next week. And that will open tomorrow afternoon at, at 3 p.m. 3 p.m. I'd also like to have a shout out to our, our students here who are yawning. <laughs>
and we'll see the rest. So, and once again, thank you so much to staff around that. We have an incredible staff here and we're very proud of our school and we know that we are very privileged to be in this space. So all the best and we look forward to seeing you next week. And you might even want to watch this presentation again if you really want to, it will be online. Thanks everyone, much appreciated. Good night. That, that draws our overnight to a close. We would like to thank everyone for participating in tonight's virtual open night. On behalf of myself, Isla, and the rest of the panel, we hope you had a good evening. Thank you.